can't hear me. That is a total shock. Oh, okay. Or irresponsible disclosure and or standards for disclosure. Or should there be a standard for disclosure? And if there is a standard for disclosure or a guideline perhaps for responsible disclosure, um, does that make it legal? Is there any non-repudiation? Is there something that would be a de facto standard for, let's say, Katie, if in fact she released, um, presented a disclosure or a vulnerability or an exploit, and then it came back to her for doing due diligence and it was you know, spread nationwide? Whose responsibility is what? To respond, to report. So, so those are the things that we'd like to talk about today. Um, not too in-depth, but I'd like to be very controversial. I don't think we're going to have a problem with that. So to begin with, I'd like to start with Stefano introducing himself because he's from Milan, and I'm not going to say uh, the verbiage correctly, who he represents. Uh, Polytechno di la viva? You pride yourself with being Italian, so you should I am be Italian. able to say Politecnico di Milano. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my name is Stefano. I'm a professor at Politecnico di Milano, which is um, Italy's largest technical university. Um, we have 38,000 students graduating in engineering. Uh, 100 of, 120 of them uh, take my computer security course. During the computer security course, they have a hacking lab where they learn how to hack applications. And after that, they begin to try to hack into the other applications of the university. And so basically every year we have like 100, 120 bug reports to file uh, with the uh, university administration. Um, no uh, panel cases yet. I'm counting on having some by the end of uh, this year. And uh, yeah, uh, that's part of my experience in, uh, in vulnerability discovery. Uh, the other part is uh, I founded um, six years ago a company called Secure Network. Uh, which is doing security research. Uh, our, our guys have been presenting at Black Hat uh, for, uh, for years, actually. Uh, so you may have seen some of them, Luca Carettoni or Claudio Criscione, who just ended up presenting our latest research on uh, um, virtualization penetration testing. So we do have a lot of uh, experience on how to report vulnerabilities and uh, how scary responses from the vendor may be sometimes, but I will talk about that later. Thank you, Ira. I'm Ira Winkler. Oh. Ira Winkler. So you start out at NSA doing stuff, breaking into things. Um, did other stuff there. Then what else? Found some vulnerabilities. Ran antivirus and firewall product certification programs. Consulted. Do <coughs> penetration testing and write stuff. Hi, I'm Katie Masaurus. I'm a senior security strategist with Microsoft. I'm in the uh, MSRC, the Microsoft Security Response Center. And uh, you know, in in terms of disclosure roles, uh, you know, you may know me from such disclosure roles as uh, being a finder. I was one of the artists formerly known as At Stake before we were acquired by Symantec. Um, I founded Symantec Vulnerability Research, and that was the first research program in Symantec's history to allow the publication of original research from. Uh, you know, essentially a lot of the at-stake consultants who were um, accustomed to being able to publish their research um, through responsible disclosure. And then uh, about three years ago, I joined Microsoft. And uh, a couple years ago, actually, um, at Black Hat, we announced uh, one of the other programs I founded, which is Microsoft Vulnerability Research. And, um, and let's see. So I have been, you know, a finder. I've been a coordinator. I've certainly been a vendor. I am, you know, uh, on the vendor side right now. And, um, and I've also been, uh, you know, on the security response side for uh, vendors of, you know, obviously closed source software, but also open source software. About 10 years ago, you know, I was a Linux developer. Um, it's okay, they, they know about that. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and at that time, I, I founded, you know, essentially the security response center for a small Linux operating system company. And I handled it soup to nuts, you know, in terms of I actually rolled the patches myself and I put them up on the FTP site. You so rolled patches, you want to elaborate on the rolling? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can get to that later, yeah. but yeah. We'll, we'll go to Dan soon here. Yeah, put it this way. If, you know, if you, if you roll your own patches, for God's sake, don't smoke them. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, anyway, the, you know, the, um, so I've, I've been at uh, a lot of different roles in the disclosure debate. And, um, and last week, you know, as part of uh, what we're doing in the ecosystem strategy team, we, we talked about uh, dropping the old responsible adjective out of disclosure 
and instead going with something more rational objective. So, um, you know, we would like to call it coordinated vulnerability disclosure. Um, and we can talk more about what that means a little bit later. I'm going to give the mic to Dan now. Thanks, Katie. Dan? First of all, who doesn't know Dan? No hands go up. Shock. Go ahead, Dan. Wow. Uh, well, I'm Dan. Apparently, you guys know me. Um, you know, you probably all know about the uh, the finding of the DNS flaw, a, a, a horribly difficult thing which took two days. Um, the fixing of the DNS flaw has been a, a, a rather longer and still ongoing to this day endeavor. Um, the my, my uh, like like most of the people on this panel, I've played multiple roles in the disclosure side. You know, it wasn't just a bug that was found. In, I mean. I basically had to live with the consequences of the find in a, a fairly direct manner of, of actually dealing with the remediation. Uh, so, you know, when people talk about how long it takes to patch a bug, I, I've lived through that process through many, through actually, you know, multiple name servers. Um, so, yeah, that's all I gotta say. He lives to talk about it. And I'm Pamela Fusco. Um, I've been in the information security arena about 24 years now. I started out as a cryptographer, and then I went on to become the chief security officer of Merck Pharmaceutical and Citigroup, so drugs and money. And before that, I was with a company called Digix, which was one of the very first managed service providers, and we're talking about this whole cloud and virtualization. Been there, done that. We did that like 10 years ago. We're still doing it. Um, so that's my background, and I've been on all sides as well, giving, receiving, reporting, mitigating, um, exploits, risks, bugs, patches, you name it, the blaster slammer, all that stuff lived through that too back in the day. So what we're going to talk about here is, you know, have lessons learned. Did we learn anything? Is anything different today than it was before? And, and also kind of what Dan said, we touched on in the beginning is, you know, what, what happens to the person that does report uh, a bug or a fix? You know, is it worth even doing at this point in time with all the aggravation that you may have to go through as an individual or an organization? So the first thing I'd like to ask the panel is, and I talk a little too fast sometimes. I'm, I'm from New York and I had a lot of Starbucks today. Um, that's a result of the Qualys party last night and some of the net witnesses party. So I'll try and slow it down a little bit, if you will. So the first question I'd like to ask the panelists is, what does full disclosure mean to you, Stefano? Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so um, we were discussing this with Ira earlier, actually. Um, on one side, I, I, I must say that uh, I've been hearing this debate for a very long time. And uh, I began looking at and using, and I will not comment any further vulnerabilities, in 1996, 1997. And this debate was already, you know, beginning to start. And, uh, well, full disclosure means originally just to release every detail of a bug finding that you made. So, Actually, there's no real, uh, you know, it's not like it's, it's two different things. Are you pro full disclosure or pro responsible disclosure? It's not two different opposing things to me. But usually, nowadays, when you talk about responsible or full disclosure, you mean to put them in comparison, in contrast, where full disclosure means you disclose details as soon as you find them or as soon as you want them uh, to disclose them and you don't care about coordinating with the vendor. Um, so I must say that, actually, uh, when I read about the, uh, re, uh, the, the, the new name that Katie proposed for coordinated vulnerability disclosure, I think that that is actually much, a much better fit to describe what, what it is about than responsible, because responsible is emotionally charged. So um, I don't know, I, I would not, I would not publicly call someone else irresponsible or say, okay, this is responsible just to mean this other thing is not. But the question um, is just full disclosure. Yeah. Responsibility. Yeah. F full disclosure means that you are going to teach the others everything about the bug. So how the bug was discovered, how the bug can be exploited, and what are the consequences of a bug. Just contrast this with the usual uh, CV entry, which just tells you, there's a bug here, update to this version, and look, may maybe sometimes there's a link that says, here there's additional information. But if vulnerability uh, disclosures were all like CERT or uh, CV entries, 
then we would not have all the details. This, this is what we used to do before full disclosure took place, actually. And there's a set of historical reasons that I'm pretty sure many of the people in the audience know uh, why this has happened, actually. So um, I will just pass by to Ira, which uh, I'm sure is a very different opinion than mine on, on this topic. So. I mean, generally, we have the same definition of full disclosure. The point, the issue is what the actual implementation is and the implication. Because there always seems to be the full disclosure versus responsible disclosure camps. And the full disclosure people say, let's put everything out there. Let's do it. The question that is not addressed in the terms by definition is when, which comes under responsibility, <coughs> But the point of the fact is when people say they're for full disclosure, inevitably it does mean that they're for full disclosure whenever they damn well seem to want to do it. That's what the definition of full disclosure is in practice. You can have a dictionary definition which says put it out there, but the important part is not full disclosure or partial disclosure, but when and the process. Because full disclosure just by definition is you disclose everything. When and how is the bigger issue. And that's but do we really disclose everything in full disclosure? You disclose it's debatable, much right? more than you should. Let's just say when people disclose full disclosure, they disclose much more than is reasonably necessary to accomplish what the goal should be. <laughs> so uh, again, you know, I think everybody probably actually knows what you know what the the definition of full disclosure is, and it is a it is a question of of you know it's honestly you know the whole disclosure debate is is you know it's a Politics and religion, you know, these are topics that one is not supposed to bring up in polite company. Mm -hmm. Good thing I'm here, right? You know, so, um, no, I mean, I think, I think ostensibly, you know, the, the proponents of full disclosure, you know, are, are, you know, saying that they're doing it in order to, to, uh, you know, give everybody sort of an even playing ground. And whether or not, you know, that's, that's actually the case, you know, we actually don't have, you know, a whole lot of, um, you know, data that really supports, you know, that, that's, that actually protects more people, you know. Um, we don't have a lot of, you know, attack data based on that. So I'd be interested in seeing, you know, if someone can actually figure out a way to measure some of these things objectively. Um, I'm all about the objective, you know. So anyway. So there really are two things going on in the phrase full disclosure. There's the discussion of when a flaw is discussed publicly and there's the question of what is the actual announcement. These are actually two completely orthogonal questions. Do you disclose to the public the moment you find the flaw? Maybe you give a lot of information, maybe you give a little. And then there's the question of, you know, what are you actually going to admit? Uh, there are people who say that you should, you know, wait until the vendor gets a patch, and then when you actually disclose, you shouldn't provide any information. Um, it's important to realize as much of a, you know, responsible disclosure kind of guy that I am, uh, I still went out with, you know, here is the DNS attack, here is exactly how you do it, here's all the damage you can do with this particular attack. And the reason why is, if we don't have the actual, I'm a believer of the full disclosure ethos, that if we don't have the actual data on what can go wrong, us defenders are going to become stupid. We will quite literally defend against ghosts, things we don't know what they are, don't know how they work. We just sort of guess and we just sort of assume. And that scares me because I have seen, frankly, very weak certification programs, very weak compliance programs. And I can't even say how many times I've been asked to turn off my cell phone on an airplane as if it mattered during takeoff and landing whether I was looking at a glowing screen. It keeps me up at night worrying that if we have insufficient disclosure, we're going to turn into the cell phone on plane guys. That was excellent. But I'm, I have to be honest with you, panelists, no one actually stuck to just the definition of what you personally thought full disclosure was. You went into, you know, past, present, future. that's okay, right? The next thing is the process of disclosure, right? And what the fact of the matter is, Black Hat exists today because it is a forum by which we do provide collaborative, collective, somewhat structured data, if you will, to disclose 
vulnerabilities and exploits. That's why we have Black Hat. That's why DEF CON started, right? Because no 